Can America afford to be the world's only superpower? That was the big question for Republicans hoping to challenge for the presidency in their latest debate last night. Well, with just under a year to go to the election, the eight Republicans in the race have been fleshing out their ideas on America's place in the world. Our Washington correspondent, Matt Fry, went along and found there is a vast gulf between the hawks and those who think America's too weak at home to expand too much power abroad. There are so many reasons why you might want to become the American president, and surely this is one of them. The annual pardoning of the Thanksgiving turkey. Weight, 45 pounds, name liberty, what else? Destiny, gracious retirement rather than White House oven. You are hereby pardoned. Give him a round of applause. A few blocks away, the eight Republicans who want to replace the partner in chief engaged in another very American ritual. These encounters are now as familiar as a marathon talent contest. This was debate number 11, and most eyes were on this week's new front runner. Newt Gingrich, abrasive and clever, the former Speaker of the House looks and sounds like a potential commander in chief. But his views on a near amnesty for some illegal immigrants will be unacceptably moderate to most rank-and-file Republicans. If you've been here 25 years and you've got three kids and two grandkids, you've been paying taxes and obeying the law, you belong to a local church, I don't think we're going to separate you from your family, uproot you forcefully and kick you out. Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, had made a similar point and it cost him in the polls even before he started forgetting his lines. It is the right wing of the Republican Party that's calling the shots these days, and the most interesting exchange of the night was between those who want to project American power and the few who acknowledge its limitations. I believe we have to have an American century where America leads the free world and the free world leads the entire world. President Obama <laughs> apologizes for America. It is time for us to be strong as a nation. And if we are strong with a military and an economy that are so strong, no one in the world will try and attempt to, uh, to threaten us. How can we have any effective foreign policy abroad when we are so weak at home? We have no choice. We got to get on our feet here domestically. The debate is over, but if you still want to know more, then come with me to the other side of the curtain, to the spin room. Your, your candidate, John Huntsman, seems to think that America's biggest threat at the moment is the failure of its own economy. Yes rather than foreign enemies. Do you agree with that? Well, he, he's, he's basically set out that if you're going to be, how, he's basically, his theory is, and I think it makes sense, how can you be strong and assertive uh, overseas if you're lost trust and confidence in your institutions when your own economy is in shambles? It's a view that has allowed Huntsman to poll consistently below 5%. It's amazing who you come across here. Remember him? Wesley Clark, ex-general and Democrat. But who did you like up there? Who did you respect I, I as a potential commander? Them, I thought all of them have come a long way. A lot of homework's been done. There's a lot of studying. President Kane, would that I be think, fine with you? President I, Perry? I think President they, Paul? I think when they get right down to it, as they've done their homework and really looked at it, they're going to converge on the policies that President Obama has in place right now. Wishful thinking, perhaps, but President Obama's biggest Thanksgiving gift is that none of the Republican candidates have sealed the deal with their own party, let alone America. Matt Fry, Channel 4 News, Washington. And Matt Fry joins us live now from Washington. Um, Matt, this is all a bit of a sludge, isn't it? Let's face it, I mean, not, none of them is any good uh, so far, really, in terms of looking like a winner. So does that mean we could have the unthinkable of a nomination from the convention floor? Or is some dark horse going to come riding in? Or is it all too late? I think none of the three that you mentioned, actually, John, I think what's probably going to happen is that Mitt Romney, the former governor of Massachusetts, who you saw there in my piece talking about projecting American strength and American power, who has only consistently polled no more than 25% of support within his own party, will become the candidate and the party will eventually rally behind him the way that Republicans tend to. And the reason is that although he doesn't set anyone on fire, although he's not going to be Barack Obama in 2008, um, he is a plausible candidate. He knows about all the issues that matter, like fixing the economy. Um, he's got, he says all the right things on foreign affairs. The problem will be, though, that they will take this candidate, 
and I'm betting a small amount of money on this, but they will not have the enthusiasm that you need in order to win what the Americans call the ground war. In other words, tens of thousands of people knocking on doors, dragging voters into minibuses and making sure that they actually put their name on the ballot. All that kind of stuff is going to lack if they don't have a candidate who generates the necessary enthusiasm. And that is Barack Obama's big chance. Statistically speaking, historically speaking, he should really lose this election unless the economy, which is the big issue, improves dramatically. A potted plant running for the Republicans might well win, but they have nothing as convincing at the moment as a potted plant, so they're going to have to deal with the candidates that they've got. Matt Fry in Washington.